Did you have support? Mm. Because, and also when you fell, did you reach out to support? And this is a funny thing that we do, right? Um, we don't reach out and some people don't even have support. So they don't really know or want to tell people that they failed or learnt. Um, Jace, you want to go into the support argument? Yeah, I feel like it kind of comes, it's a big part of, um, in my head, the whole influencer generation where all the people that you're seeing, right? A lot of people, especially when they're working with a coach, they'll probably see that coach's social media and they'll see that they're crushing it all the time. They're, they'll see that they're doing all this amazing stuff. They're jacked and they're, you know, they're just you know, hitting all these PBs all the time, doing, you know, eating great food, choosing the chicken salad as opposed to the burger, all that kind of stuff. And then they kind of get in their own heads like, oh, should I actually reach? Oh, what if they're disappointed in me? What if I let them down? And one of the big fears that we tend to have as, as human beings is the fear of, of not being good enough right and not being worthy essentially mm. and we'll have that as a big that's a big um a big cycle that will play out in people's lives is constantly doing things out of fear of not being good enough and not putting themselves out there because they fear that that's the way that they're going to be judged and they'll do that with their coach they'll do that with their support network where they won't reach out to the people who are they're either paying or that they're you know that know that they're there for support um part of their job description. It's like, you're depriving them of my job. It's like going out and telling the garbage man not to pick up your fucking garbage, right? No, no, no. I want to keep this bin. Really? Why? It's full. You're going to have to, it's going to overflow next week. Your house is going to start smelling. No, no, no. It's my bin. No, I know. I know. I pay a service to you to do this, but I'm not going to use it. Right? It, it makes no sense logically, but it's not a logical decision. We don't want other people to sort of see us fail, especially just in this generation where we are seeing a lot of, you know, you see these jacked guys on on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and, you know, and here on this podcast, at least one of us is, is jacked, you know, the other one's getting there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the issue with that is that it's, it, you kind of you need to have the conversation, but you're too scared to have the conversation or you're worried of being judged. And then you just, you don't reach out to the help that you have. Um, and that perpetuates the cycle where then you fail and then you're like, oh, but I should have reached out because your coach, you reach out and then you're like, oh, this coach actually made it sound so much better than it is. And I used to, you know, in my previous coaching career, I'd have a ton of clients that would eventually reach out and say, oh, this is actually not as scary as I thought it was going to be. You know, I thought you were going to be hard on me or I thought you were going to, you know, rake me over the coals. You know, another, another very, uh, very severe analogy, raking someone over the coals. Like, geez, <laughs> like, we're just uncovering it all here. But that, that's not what a support network is for, right? Like the support is meant to be, and if, it's, if this isn't what your support is like, then you need better support. But your mm. support is like, okay, cool. This has happened. Now let's take a look at what to do moving forward, right? Uh, unless you're like a psychologist, we don't need to go unpacking, you know, your childhood trauma and all this other kind of stuff, but we can say, all right, this has happened. Let's analyze why it happened. Let's go through that. Let's make sure that doesn't happen again and let's learn from it and let's make a plan moving forward. It, that's not a scary conversation to have. So if you're feeling like the, that conversation is going to bring up shame and guilt and all this other stuff, it's a reflection point. But also if you have that conversation and it does feel like shit, you need better support. 100%, man. I think when we're looking at this, uh, you touched on, again, the catastrophizing. So we don't reach out to our support network because we have this fear of being judged negatively. And I think that's the biggest thing. That is one of the biggest fears. What is the um, one of the biggest fears that someone has is public speaking is because they stuff up and there's a fear of judgment. So we get, feel like even, I'm going to tell you this right now, no one cares about you at all as much as you think they do because they have their own shit they're dealing with. So like they don't care about enough about your shit because they're dealing with their own. They have their own problems. And I tell you what, if everyone threw their problems in a pile, you'd probably just grab your own ones back. Um, so I, I want you to get over yourself. Okay. With this and understand that, you know, you, you shouldn't have anxiety. It's like the easiest way to do something is to rip the bandaid off. And then the crucial conversation or the uncomfortable conversation with anything in life, you blow it up bigger than it is and you normally have it and you everyone listening to this probably as well they've had this tough conversation they're like oh that wasn't tough at all it was just a conversation and that person was really understanding and they supported me um because we we keep making this harder and harder and bigger and bigger and that's what gives us the anxiety around it and that's what it then continues to prolong us not having that conversation so rip the bandaid off reach out to the support they are there for you if and also if you haven't got support in the past and you're starting a journey you need to find support.